In the main pane here, we actually have Scrum, Kanban, and DIY. We have three tabs here. And again, that's going back to Scrum and Kanban, the two main methodologies that people are using Greenhopper to assist them with. Under each of these tabs, there's further resources. So you can see links to the Greenhopper 101, using Greenhopper for Scrum, and actually links to learning more about Scrum. So in this case, the Scrum Guide. Uh, same for Kanban as well. We'll come back to Kanban in a second, but to start off, I actually wanted to show you uh, creating a Scrum project. So we're going to create a new project and we're going to call it uh, Scary Project. And what you'll see here is that we've actually got a workflow option. So by default, in the past, if you created a new project and you created a new Scrum board or a new Kanban board, it would be using the Jira default workflow. One of the key improvements or new features in Greenhopper 6 is actually the Greenhopper simplified workflow. And uh, so we select it um, and I'll show you what that Greenhopper Simplified Workflow actually provides. So we've now created a new board. And as always, you get the congratulations, you've got your new board, you can share that link with your users. What I'd like to do is just quickly create a few stories on this board. And the first thing that you'll see that's a bit different in Greenhopper 6 is that we have an Add Sprint button. We've removed the Sprint marker from the base board. And so when I press the Add Sprint button, that's when I'll see the Sprint marker and indeed a whole Sprint container. So this is brand new in Greenhopper 6. And I can drag, much like the Sprint marker that we used to have, I can drag this Sprint container over the items in the backlog to select what items will fall into this Sprint. And so if we select those first three items, you'll see that we've got upcoming Sprint 1, and then we've still got our backlog. What's really cool, though, is that I can create another Sprint. And I can do this to my heart's content. And I can start planning future, future Sprints. So I can plan my Sprints in the future. And you can see here I've now got upcoming Sprint 1, upcoming Sprint 2, upcoming Sprint 3, and the remainder of my backlog, and so on. Uh, of course, I can delete a sprint if I want to, but really I don't think that's going to be a key feature because people will just rearrange and reshuffle their stories. Of course, I can still use my keyboard shortcuts like ST to send to the top, and you now see that seven, SCA7 has been ranked at the top. Um, similar to the sprint marker, when I press the Start Sprint button, uh, well, we'll see that I don't have estimates uh, on all of these issues, but I can start that sprint, I can specify my start date and my end date. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now so that I can go back to that Greenhopper Simplified Workflow and show you how that Greenhopper Simplified Workflow actually um, operates. So we are now in Sprint 1 and we have a standard board, to do, in progress, done. You've seen this before, it's common, it's been with Greenhopper since day one. What's different, however, is when we actually go into Tools and Configure. And when we go into Tools and Configure, you'll see here on the Columns tab of the configuration that we have Simplified Workflow using Greenhopper Simplified Workflow. And what you see on the right-hand side here is Add Column and Add Status. So you do get a new button. What I'm actually going to do, or what I'd like to do, is add an in-review state for my team. Now, as you know, what you would have had to have done in the past is actually go into Jira administration. You would have had to have copied or created a new workflow, created a workflow scheme, assigned the project that workflow scheme, then come back in here and then mapped the statuses to the board. Well, guess what? We've done away with all of that. We add a column, we type in the name in review, we press enter, and we've got all of that 
column mapping, workflow configuration, workflow schemes, it's all taken care of in the background. So again, if we refer back to the usage survey results, we know that people struggle getting started and getting the board set up. And we wanted to make it easy for those new to agile teams. With the Greenhopper Simplified Workflow, we've done just that. With one click now, you can actually create a new column and we'll, we'll add another one, awaiting deployment. So we've got a new status, we've got a new column, we've got it all in one. And if we go back to the board, you'll see that I can drag these issues for, from column to column. And if you notice, there's a couple, there's the done column, the in progress and the to do column, which are blue and the awaiting deployment column, which is green at the moment. The green demonstrates which column I'm about to drop it on. So now done is green. But what that means is that unlike the default JIRA workflow, we've removed the restriction that if you're an assignee, uh, you need to be an assignee, sorry, to, to drag and drop the issues. So if I was to change this issue here to uh, my colleague Christina, I can still drag and drop that issue on behalf of Christina. So again, another common question from customers was, why can't I drag and drop my issues? What's going on? Well, we, we give customers today that notification. The blue is where they can actually drop, and the green is the drop zone that they're about to drop it into. There's no restriction on the assignee with the Greenhopper, work, the Greenhopper Simplified Workflow. So those two key things, we've got the upcoming sprints, that we can drag and drop to do future sprint planning. And we have in the workflow, the work, the simplified workflow. So there are two. Ah, sorry, we've just had a question on the sprints. Um, you can't drag, you can't drag it, well, yes, it does look like we're dragging the sprint over the upcoming sprint two and the backlog. What you'll see is that as we actually drop that, it'll shuffle upcoming sprint two down. So it's now shuffled upcoming sprint two and the backlog down. Um, but that's a great question. I'll actually, I'll pass that on to the team as well. Um, so that's two of the key new features in, in Greenhopper 6 in regards to Scrum and the simplified workflow. One other thing I wanted to just touch on briefly was the, uh, the linking between the actual board itself and, a Jira, or, and the Jira view issue page. So if you look at the Jira view issue page, we're looking here at Angry Nerds, A Nerd 6. Um, we're actually looking at the commit history here, but now we've got this agile section on the lower right here. And if we press view on board, we can get a list of all the boards that A Nerd 6 appears on. And so if we click on Angry Nerds, this second board here, it'll actually highlight that issue in the current board. Now, if this particular issue had been complete and it was in a it, it had been in a, a completed sprint for instance uh, you'd be taken to the sprint report so wherever that issue is in Greenhopper that's where you'll get taken and of course you can always jump straight back uh, to that Jira view issue page um, from the actual Greenhopper board as well so that's helping with that round trip from one to the other Some of the other Scrum features, for those that might not have seen them, um, one key feature that I'm sure a lot of your customers are asking for, because our customers have been asking for it for a long time, is scope change. So we're actually looking at uh, one sprint here for the Greenhopper team um, that was just around the time of the Atlassian Summit. And you can see here that as we burnt down over the course of this sprint, we continually burnt down work until we saw this little blip here at about just before May 29. And if we hover over and we look at that dot there, oh, sorry, I'll just hover over it again. You'll see the scope change. Issue was added to sprint and there's been a change in story points because three story points were added. And it tells you the exact date and time as well. You've got full traceability for scope change in this table below. So we know when we started the sprint, what was actually 
included in this in this sprint. So we had 44 remaining to get started. And you see all of the activity here. Issue added to sprint, issue completed, and so on. Until we go right down the end here, and what did we finish up with? Sprint end, and there were five story points remaining. So if we go across to the team's velocity chart, you'll see here that for 99 sprint balloons, in fact, that's it doesn't add up, so I must be reading the data incorrectly, but um, we have commitment, so our team's commitment when they started the sprint was 44 and they completed 42. So you can track the team's progress over time, what they're committing to, um, or perhaps how ac accurate their estimates are um, and what they're actually delivering. And of course, all of this history is available for Scrum teams in the Sprint Report, which is another report that's available in the Reports drop-down on the Reports mode. And so the Sprint Report will actually show you what issues were completed, the story points assigned to those, and indeed it will also point out what issues were not completed, what issues were moved back to the top of the backlog. And so they're the things that I wanted to touch on first and foremost for Scrum. Uh, so much like the, the Scrum preset, you can actually create a Kanban board. Uh, and with the Kanban board, you've got that Greenhopper simplified workflow, very similar to, uh, to what we have for the Scrum stuff. But the key difference, I'm actually just going to jump across to an existing one, Angry Nerds. Oops, apologize. So this is uh, Angry Nerds board. Uh, it's actually a Kanban board. And you can tell that because we haven't enabled the plan mode for the Kanban preset just yet. Uh, that is something that we'll have to work on in the future, but I can't give you an estimate on when that'll be at the moment. So today, what Kanban teams do is they have their backlog in the left column and then they move to ready for dev, in dev, in review, and done. And if we just go configure here, what I wanted to show you was that if you have an existing project, so that, that Greenhopper Simplified workflow is all well and good if you're creating a new project, but what about if you've got an existing project? Well, Angry Nerds, this is an existing project, and what we can do is we can simplify the workflow. So if someone wants to actually take an existing project and switch it across to the Greenhopper Simplified workflow so that they can manage it here on the board configuration, uh, they can go through that step. It'll do all of the association with the issues, uh, move existing statuses across, create that workflow in the background. It's quite a painful, uh, painless uh, process to actually do this. Um, so you can do that with existing projects as well, which is really key. But what I thought I'd show you for Kanban is actually a couple of real boards uh, at Atlassian. First and foremost, I wanted to show you the build engineering board. So the build engineering team is an internal team of five people and they support all of our internal product development teams, Jira, Confluence, Greenhopper, providing and maintaining the build infrastructure. The build engineering team lives day to day on this build eng board to do in progress blocked and done. You can see here in the to do column that they have actually set minimum column constraints and maximum column constraints. The minimum column constraint is a notification to the team lead that if this column ever goes yellow, there's not enough work in the backlog or in the to-do column for his team, and so he needs to bring more work in. On the other hand, the 15 says that if there's ever more than 15 items in this column, there's too much noise for the team, and so we want to minimize that noise. Similarly, in progress has a limit of 12, um, you know, it's obviously we don't want people to be working on too many things at one point in time because we want them to focus on one thing and get it across the board to done. And you can see here that the team is actually, they've exceeded, they've got 21 issues in this column and they've exceeded their maximum constraint for the blocked column. So they have a whole lot of stuff that's blocked and, uh, and that's, that red column is a warning flag to them that they need to do something about it. They're also using swim lanes here to split out the work by fault for all teams, particular product teams, or indeed other teams. And they're using a lot of quick filters across the top here. Um, something to point out, if you're not already familiar with this, the quick filters 
and the swim lanes are all created with JQL. The swim lanes do actually have the ability to uh, base them on, in fact, I can't show you because I don't own this board, but swim lanes can be built based on uh, assignee or indeed parent, uh, which is parents useful for those scrum teams that have broken a pair or a story down into tasks. And the quick filters are all based on JQL. And you can see that JQL here. What's key for this build engineering team though is the reports. And so they have a board here that includes all of their historical released work. And so we're looking at the control chart at the moment, and this is one of those charts that's available for the Kanban uh, preset. And we're looking at the last six months worth of work. Now we can quickly change that report time frame. One other key thing to note is that we can refine this chart, this control chart, to show only particular columns on that board. So if we just wanted to look at the blocked issue and how, many, how much time issues spent in blocked, we could refine it to do that. So what we're looking at at the moment is how much time all of these issues spend in the backlog, in in progress and blocked. And you can see here that there's an outlier up the top, which is, gosh, it's, I mean, it's nearly a year it was in progress. Um, so that's something that the team would obviously want to investigate further. But what's more interesting is the average, the, the running average of this work over time. And so for this team in particular, um, most of their work takes about a week. Once you start it, and including any blocked items, once you start it to completion, it's in progress for about a week. And we can find out more information about any particular issue that we want. So this one here, build engine 1907, it was on the backlog for less than a day. It was in progress for 27 minutes, right? So it was, it was dealt with quite quickly. And this is really key for teams to, because Kanban teams want to continually improve uh, the speed at which they deliver, right? Because they're always focused on delivering quality. Quality is, a, uh, you know, one of the things that does not move for this team. Um, they can take longer, as long as they need, but they need to get it done with a high degree of quality. And so what they're trying to do is provide that same level of quality consistently while still minimising the actual cycle time over time. And you can see here that it dips a little bit and it, and it rises back up again. Um, to jump from a build engineering team, which is kind of like a DevOps team, into something entirely different, I actually wanted to demonstrate the support team. So our global support team actually uses uh, Greenhopper and Kanban to manage uh, customer support requests. So this is really key for, uh, for any service desk, whether it be an internal facing or an external facing service desk. You can actually use Greenhopper and Kanban to manage your work. So what this team has is they have a number of swim lanes, critical unassigned escalated you can see at the top, and then they have swim lanes by assignee, so by the actual individuals in this team. And if we look, their columns are quite interesting because we have escalated. So what customers have come back to us and escalated their work? What's been, what work is new or what's been transferred from another geography to the San Francisco geography? What's currently in investigation? What's in an internal escalation? As in a support engineer here in San Francisco has escalated it to Sydney for a developer review. And what's waiting for customer? Now, Chris Lepetit goes into excruciating detail about this from his summit talk. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend you watch Chris Lepetit's talk at summit 2012. 